Hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you how you can synthesize your own kick drum in Ableton's native operator synth. In fact, we've got four elements over here in this drum rack, all of which are synthesized in operator and they are modeled after the famous Roland TR909. So here's what the kick sounds like. Hi-hat, clap and snare. And what's so awesome about having synthesizers instead of samples in a drum rack like this is that you have much more flexibility over the timbre of each sound. So you can control not only the post-processing like with the sample, but also various synthesis parameters uh, which are only available from the synthesizer. For instance, uh, you've got decay and uh, you've got pitch modulation and a bunch of other parameters for each sound. And you can always also process these by placing effects after them. So you have these really nice macros for easy control and you can even hit randomize over here to get different kick drums. So making a kick drum with this rack is as easy as clicking randomize a few times and picking what you like. But in this tutorial, we will focus only on making this kick drum an operator from scratch. And hopefully by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to make your own kick drums very easily. And this drum rack is available as a free download in the description. Grab it for yourself, try it out, try a few different randomized options and see if it can work in your track. Or you can make it even better, add lots of effects after these racks and uh, map them to the macros and the uh, drum rack. Uh, there's a lot of options here. It doesn't have to be a techno and house drum kit. Uh, I'm sure with the right operator settings, you can fit it in lots of other genres. But before we get into the details, if you like what we are doing on this channel, consider subscribing for more Ableton Live tips like this one. We've got a lot more videos also on drum elements coming up. So let's open up this instrument rack and pick out this instance of operator. I will put it on a brand new MIDI track. Before we discuss uh, what are the elements of this kick drum, let's go over the basics of synthesis in operator. So operator is a simple FM synthesizer. The most famous FM synth would be the Yamaha DX7 from the 80s. And this one is a bit of a simplified version of that because we've got only four operators here or for oscillators. And usually FM synths are used to get more interesting timbres than from subtractive synths. But for drum elements, this is not a top priority. What is important is that the synth has a lot of sound sources and operator has four sound sources, all which can be totally different sounds. And this is the most out of all uh, synths in Ableton because wavetable and analog, these have three oscillators. You could actually make these sounds with any of the synths in Ableton because we can always layer two instances and this way you double your amount of oscillators. But this gets a little bit more complex and in this tutorial we are just going to keep with one instance of operator to keep it simple. So the two basic oscillator types that we are using for drum elements are the sine wave and the white noise. The two elements of our drum are going to be the the fundamental and the transient. The fundamental is the bassy uh, low end frequencies uh, that give the kick most of its power and it sounds like this and uh, the Transient sounds like this. So it's just a sharp, noisy top portion of the uh, first a few milliseconds of the kick drum. And together it sounds like this, obviously without the processing we had in the drum rack. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to drop a brand new instance of operator here and let's start from designing the fundamental. We can actually start by changing this first sine wave to fixed mode and choosing the frequencies. And for the fundamental, we are going to keep to frequencies below 60 Hertz. So the sub frequencies. So I'm going to keep around 49 Hertz, but you can experiment on your own. It doesn't have to be that. 
You can always also look up different tunings if you want this kick drum to be in tune with your track. Uh, different numbers of hertz correspond to different uh, root notes, but for this purpose 49 hertz is what we're going for. Now let's control the decay. And to control the decay we need to lower the sustain all the way, so the sound is not sustained. And we've got one second of decay and we can actually choose somewhere between 300 and one second. Uh, we can actually keep it around 600 or 700 milliseconds so that the tail is slightly longer. Now all we need to do is just add the pitch envelope to make this a little bit more pronounced. So adding the pitch envelope immediately it should sound better. Okay, so you can hear the pitch changing and let's make it even higher. So 36 steps and 24 steps for the peak here. But we can actually add some attack here around 5 milliseconds and a decay of 120 milliseconds. And this already sounds much nicer. You can actually add the slope to 100% here and this is the final result of our pitch envelope and this already sounds much punchier than before. Just a quick break before we go back to the tutorial. If you find these type of videos helpful, we can highly recommend the PML Academy with over 35 full-length online courses spreading over topics like writing chords and melodies or arranging your songs to producing entire songs from start to finish. So check out the link in the description to see what's inside the All Courses bundle exactly. And now we can actually add a filter, which we're going to just use to add a little bit of drive. So keeping it even higher at around 15 kilohertz and going to hard with the shaper, uh, this should be quite aggressive by now. But we can decrease the drive here, even all the way to minus 12 dB, and this is much better now. So without the filter, and with the filter, yeah, this is much more punchy and it boosts that fundamental by a lot. And that would be it for the fundamental, and for the transient we are going to use white noise. But we are going to root that white noise into a sine wave, which is a cool feature you can do in operator. You can root different oscillators in it into each other to modify the timbre, and most of the time this adds harmonics. So we are going to make this sound a little bit grittier by just rooting the C oscillator, which we're going to have as the white noise, into the B oscillator, uh, which is going to be a sine wave. To start, we need to change the mode of rooting these different oscillators here. So now, as you can see, we have each oscillator going into the oscillator below. And this way, if we added B, uh, we would modulate A with B. And we want to leave A alone, this is going to be a separate element. Let's choose this mode, which leaves A separate and all the other elements are in a straight line like this. So D goes into C, goes into B, and A is separate. So let's uh, disable A for now, and we actually also now can choose 49 hertz here and increase the level. And also we can decrease the sustain completely and make the decay really short, around 70. 3 milliseconds. So this is just a very sharp attack. So let's go to around minus 14 decibels over here and let's change the oscillator C to white noise and increase that to around minus 17 dB and let's uh, go all the way up with the sustain. Um, so this is what it sounds like by now. So this would be a sharp attack. Now uh, if we enable A as well, this now uh, is a little bit nicer. Uh, we can lower uh, the first oscillator by 2 decibels. This is pretty much it. And to top it off, we can just add a glue compressor. Glue compressor is over here. And we are just going to use it 
to uh, add some soft clipping. So uh, instead of limiting this sound, we are going to uh, squash it a little bit with soft clipping. So turning off the soft clipping here, and this is already working. We can increase the makeup slightly. Maybe let's turn up the gain. This is also going to just add a slight bit of distortion here. And we can actually add an EQ as well and make a shelf here to boost the high end. Now you can control this uh, shelf with this gain knob. Let's minimize these effects and we can put that in a drum rack. So first of all, I'm grouping. So first of all, I've grouped these effects by selecting them, clicking command uh, on Mac and or control on Windows and G. And uh, now I can map a bunch of parameters, for example, the decays, and uh, for example, the level of this high shelf or the makeup of the glue compressor into these macros. And if I place this inside a uh, drum rack, it is now inside as this pad. And we can place a bunch of other parameters here as well. And once you're done mapping, you can just uh, fold this view and you've got a really nice uh, tidy uh, drum rack. So this is how this was done. And uh, the last thing uh, you might want to need to do is when you're mapping, you only need to select uh, the ranges of your mapping. For example, the minimum decay might be 200 milliseconds and the maximum decay could be 800 milliseconds here. And now this gives you a much more flexibility. You don't have to be super careful here when changing this knob. And now you can also safely hit randomize uh, without getting very weird results. And that is it for this tutorial. Thank you guys very much for watching. Consider checking out our Music Production Academy. We've got a lot of start to finish courses for both beginners and more advanced producers. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment if you like this video, and I will see you in the next ones.